Hey VC, this is Carlos from As The Table Turns. Uh, I wanted to come on here and do another artist spotlight. This one's going to be about Doc Boggs. I used to be a rounder, I stayed around in town. I used to be a rounder, I stayed around in town. I caught pretty ball and so cute it's never been found. Uh, he's a traditional Appalachian folk uh, artist, um, uh, plays the banjo. Um, so yeah, he's one of my favorite artists. Um, I know that's kind of weird, maybe, but uh, yeah, I really like uh, traditional Appalachian folk music. So uh, yeah, just gonna be discussing his life and uh, his style of playing, uh, his renown, um, all those different types of things. So uh, he grew up in West Norton, Virginia. Uh, it's basically the furthest west that you can get in Virginia almost. It's like almost at that very tip where it meets uh, Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, so right in the Appalachian Mountains right there. Uh, he was born in uh, 1898 and uh, he was the youngest of 10 kids. Uh, his father was uh, loved to sing and loved to, um, uh, was able to read music, um, but the thing about Doc Boggs is he didn't play the banjo with the traditional or the widely used claw hammer style. He had a finger, finger picking style. It was called up picking. Um, and uh, he would basically pick the uh, upper, upper two strings and with his fingers, and then the lower three strings, he would um, he would strum together, I believe, uh, on a downward strum. And Doc Boggs said that uh, he would follow a uh, black uh, African American musician around uh, that worked in the coal mines. He would follow him around and uh, just to hear him play, um, and really was kind of zoning on how this this man would play. I believe his name was Go Lightning. Um, and uh, follow him up and down the railroad tracks, just trying to listen to, to how he played. I guess Doc really enjoyed listening to this more bluesy uh, sound that the African Americans had. Um, and so that's kind of how he sings. He sings in a more bluesy way rather than, um, rather than singing in the traditional folk way. He kind of has this blues uh, way about him, which really draws me, drew me to, to his sound. Um, and uh, anyway, so then uh, another thing about, I have notes here because uh, I can't just remember all this stuff, but uh, uh, he also played several songs in a lower D mo modal uh, tuning. Um, and I'll show, p plug a little video in here showing, showing that style. So E, C, F, G, C. And what that is, is one full step below the standard pitch tuning, um, that's F sharp D G A D. I think people call that, um, a lot of times people call that Doc Boggs tuning. Yeah, so that, that's his uh, picking style right there. Um, he was initially discovered uh, when Brunswick, uh, the Brunswick label, was going around trying to find rural musicians uh, to play the folk, folk music because it was becoming a big thing kind of in the 1920s. This kind of, there was another revival that was happening because all these people had moved to the city um, and to, to these big cities in the 1920s, 1930s, and um, 
they kind of were feeling sentimental and feeling um, about about where their family grew up and the, how things used to be prior to moving to the city. Um, so at that time in the 1920s, 1930s, uh, folk music had another kind of revival at that time where people were wanting to kind of go back to the old ways of how things were done, or at least listen to that type of music and kind of get a little, a little bit of it, you know, a little slice of it. And um, so the Brunswick label was going around trying to record these rural, ar rural artists. Um, uh, almost just like the Victor uh, label found Jimmy Rogers and the Carter family, you know, um, when they went to Bristol, Tennessee. So, um, yeah, so they went, they went around, they went to Norton and they were at the Norton Hotel and had artists come in. People that, that were musically inclined, you know, lined up. But when they heard uh, Doc Boggs, they heard that finger pick and style when he was playing his song Country Blues for them. Um, you know, it didn't take long for them to know that he was something special. Um, and so he was able to uh, create, uh, I think, eight sides for them. He, he did eight songs um, for, for uh, the Brunswick label in 1927. Um, then in uh, 1929, he went to Chicago and tried to record for another uh, label that was there, um, the Ace label. But then obviously the Depression hit in 1929, and so that label went under. And uh, then he uh, tried to go to uh, Atlanta to the OK label. They were holding open auditions and uh, tried to go up on stage, but his nerves got the better of him and he wasn't really able to perform. So he tried a few other times to, to record for different places, but nothing really panned out. And so he ended up pawning off his, uh, his banjo. And for the next uh, 35 years, um, worked in the mines uh, in, in Virginia and uh, in uh, Kentucky. The two places that he lived, he kind of went back and forth between those two places, Letcher County, Kentucky, and uh, Wise County uh, in Virginia. Um, and the reason why they lived in Letcher County, Kentucky, he lived in Letcher County, Kentucky, is because he was running away from the cops um, uh, for moonshine uh, because, you know, just, just like, uh, just like a lot of people back in those days, uh, everybody that was mining didn't make enough money for mining, and they had to supplement their income. And one of the ways that Doc wanted to supplement his income was being a musician, but that never panned out. You know, back in those days, so he took to doing moonshine. You know, making moonshine, and so um, he he got locked up a couple times, and that's where the Wise County. Um, Wise County uh, Jail song comes into play. Wash up your face, boys, come up your head. Now get ready for your coffee and bread. Hard times in the Wise County Jail, it's hard times, I know. Beats cold meat and cold cornbread. It's so cold, it's heavy as lead. Hard times in the Wise County Jail, it's hard times, I know. You're in jail, it's so complete About one half enough to eat Hard times in the wild kind of jail That's hard times, I know Almost makes my stomach ache When they bring the potatoes in the old tin plate It's hard times in the wild kind of jail Hard times, I know Beer in jail, it is so nice. The munch and dirt and the body lies. Hard times in the wild kind of jail, that's hard times I know. Wise kind of jail, no jail at all. The changes and bugs are walking the wall. Hard times in the wild kind of jail, that's hard times I know. Almost brings me to my knees when I hear that jailer ring them keys. It's hard times in the wild kind of jail, hard times I know. Officers around Norton, the dirty old crew, they arrest a poor man, they look it plumb through. His box they'll pick, his clothes they'll sell. Twenty-five cents they send him to hell. It's hard times in the wild kind of jail, it's hard times I know. And, uh... Yeah, so uh, I, 
he, he kind of gave away his banjo. Another reason that he, he gave away his banjo was there was a uh, religious press pressure from his neighbors and from his wife, um, who would often talk to him about how playing music was evil. Um, and I know that blues artists also had this, this uh, problem too. Um, talking about certain subjects and, and singing about certain subjects. Um, you know, they, they felt like, uh, also the lifestyle, I think, with the blues artists. But lifestyle, I'm not gonna say lifestyle with the, the folk artists was any different, you know, drinking and gambling, and uh, that was definitely a big part of Doc Boggs' life. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so they, they've, uh, it's funny how artists back in the day had this, this uh, real uh, pull in different directions uh, as far as religious uh, religious beliefs and wanting to put down the music so that they wouldn't die because in the blues in the blues uh, with the blues artists it was uh, the fear of the life killing them and it often did I mean uh, you know Robert Johnson died uh, at a young age um, so many other artists died at a young age because of this kind of partying travel lifestyle uh, that they that they took on with the blues music, um, so I don't know if that was kind of another thing that that Doc Boggs um, dealt with was that was there you know a lot of drinking and the lifestyle that took on uh, or came with this music you know was that something that kind of put pushed him away from it? But I, I would say that the recording thing had a big a big part in it and the fact that the depression was at that time and and so he he pawned off his um banjo and, and took to the mines um and lived that way for about 35 years until 1963 um mike seeger found him um and about six months before that doc boggs had said that he had got his ban banjo back and um or a banjo i don't know if it was the same banjo and had begun practicing again um, and it was kind of just perfect timing because Mike Seeger got there and he had picked up right where he had left off you know from 1927 um, and 1929 um, so not he hadn't missed a step um, and uh, yeah remembered all these songs remember all the lyrics um, and right at that time was that folk music revival again that, that you know everything's comes back around you know and 1960s kind of hit and the newport folk festival uh was a big big festival plus you know he would play in various uh i think clubs and, and stuff like that probably in new york and and other various places um with uh, with this whole kind of traveling folk festival that was happening and uh, yeah, and went into the studio and was able to record uh, tons of songs. I mean, I have, uh, digitally, I have everything that he recorded. Uh, you know, it's probably 40 songs, I would say. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I also have these albums here and they, they were able to put these out. Um, so Doc Boggs, um, legendary singer and banjo player uh, for the Folkways, uh, some Smith Smithsonian Folkways back back in the 60s. I think it was just Folkways, but that's uh, that's who he recorded these for. Um, right there, and you have on here. Let's see, Down South Blues, Country Blues, Pretty Polly, Coal Creek March. Uh, My Old Horse Died, Wild Bill Jones, Rowan County Crew, New Prisoner's Song, Oh Death, Prodigal Son. Those are two big songs for him, along with Country Blues and Pretty Polly. Uh, Drunkard's Lone Child, Bright Sunny South, Mistreated Mama Blues, Harvey Logan. And then uh, I have this, the second one, Doc Boggs, Volume 2. Um, this has Mixed Blues, Old Joe's uh, Bar Room, Danville Girl, Cole Younger, uh, Scottish uh, Time, or, or Scottish Time, uh, Papa Papa, Build Me a Boat, 
a uh, little black train, no disappointment in heaven, glory land, banjo clog, wise county jail, which is another big hit for him, sugar baby, which was one of his original songs that's actually on um, that's on Henry Smith's uh, American folk uh, folk music uh, that was released in 1951. Uh, I think that that's kind of when that that record right there is what jump started the whole um, folk music revival. Uh, people hearing that album, um, but Mike Seeger uh, in the early '60s, um, I don't know if late '50s, but early '60s, went around uh, different parts of uh, the country looking for uh, musicians. Um, because the folk movement was was something that was kind of getting big. I think in the late '50s. Um, and, uh, and so he was going around looking for these old artists because he had heard about these old artists, him and uh, John Cohen and uh, um, I think uh, Bill O'Callaghan um, is, is, is his name. But anyway, they would go around and look for these artists. He was able to find Doc Boggs um, and, uh, and he said that his uh, finger picking style was like no other. Um, you know, and uh, stories that Doc, he, he would sit down with Doc and, and ask him um, stuff and had interviews with him and everything. I took that old banjo up there and they asked me did I play it and I told them I played one kind of like it a little bit. And they told me to go ahead and give them a piece. And I played about a verse of uh, country blues. I called it country blues, it really hustling and gamblers. Where did you learn that song? I learned it from a man from Tennessee. I don't know, uh, Crawford, Homer Crawford. And uh, he played the old way, old banjos, and the old way of playing. So uh, I just played a little of that, and I noticed they all marked it good on the papers. And they asked me to play another one, and I started out to play the Down South Blues, a song that I'd learned. And I heard some of it on a phonograph record back years before this, and they played on the piano, but I'd come and play it on a banjo and sing it and put it to verse or two in it I'd made myself. And so I just played about two verses and I noticed they had marked good on that and they come around with papers wanting to sign me up to go to make phonograph records. And three weeks from that time I was on my way to New York to make phonograph records. Another thing about Doc Boggs, uh, when he did go to the coal mines and kind of left music behind for those 35 years, he didn't just kind of bow down to the way things were. He was always, um, kind of thinking of the bigger picture and not just um, taking what people handed him. You know, I, you hear it in his music, you hear it in his voice. Um, his voice is very, um, very truthful. There's a lot of just, um, there's no shying away from stuff. It's straightforward, it's, it's um, honest. Uh, a lot of honesty in his voice um, and uh, I really love that about him uh, there's no I mean you know there's that blues singing the way that he's he's able to sing the words but still it's just very straightforward and very honest um, and uh, yeah so with his with his mining um, he was kind of an activist in in helping start the union the coal miners union there um, the United Miners uh, of America Union, um, and starting that uh, for his area, you know, and talking to the people that he worked with, uh, the other miners, and really getting them on board. So uh, one of the, you know, like just like Harry Smith's, um, Harry Smith's re uh, recordings or his album that he he released uh, with all these uh, various folk artists um, was. Uh, one of the places that he, another place that he was first heard was um, Thomas Hart Benton, the painter, um, uh, had his recordings. Um, and Charles Seeger, uh, Pete Seeger and Mike Seeger's father was um, over at uh, Benton's house. And uh, Benton was listening to, um, to Doc Boggs, um, some of their original recordings. He must have come across them possibly when he was uh, had come back from Europe. Uh, Thomas Hart Benton went to Europe, and then he went on on his return. Uh, I forget. It was after World War II. Um, he was uh, going around, and he had kind of he had kind of rejected um, 
the modern art scene and was more uh, talking about this uh, regional regionalism um, and what that was is kind of um, falling in love with the rural uh, areas of of his homeland you know of America and uh, so he traveled around um, and painted uh, you know it's it's very clear in, in a lot of his paintings you know he was he was in love with music he was in love with the rural lifestyle uh, the simpler times um, and simpler things uh, of life um, and I think in those travels, he probably picked up some of the recordings. Uh, also about Thomas Hart Benton, he was a, uh, an accomplished um, harmonica player. Um, and he's on he has his own recordings himself. So um, anyway, but that's where Charles Seeger first heard Doc Boggs, you know. And Charles Seeger being uh, that same kind of, uh, of that same cloth you know, as Alan Lomax and all those, all these other people that would go around and, and discover new music kind of also to help discover, uh, Doc Boggs. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, and the, the Seegers themselves are just very much, uh, with the Lomaxes in that where they're, they're searching, you know, for, for music because, uh, Pete Seeger, uh, went to work for uh, John and Alan and would listen to recordings. Um, he would sit there and listen to recordings, I'm guessing, to either um, find uh, good recordings um, and or just to document uh, the recordings that he was listening to. But, um, but yeah, that was one of uh, Pete Seeger's first jobs, you know, was sitting there and listening to recordings while uh, Alan and John worked on their books. Um, and uh, yeah, and then Mike Seeger obviously is the, the one of the people that first you know discovered or went to rediscover um, uh, Doc Boggs, and uh, you can see right down here uh, has Mike Seeger, so recorded and edited by Mike Seeger, so he is a big part of these recordings. Um, uh, that is my uh, little spotlight of Doc Boggs. Um, hope you liked it. Please subscribe. Um, if you want to hit the notifications, uh, you can. Comment below. Um, talk about other, you know, uh, Appalachian folk music artists that you really like, or uh, let me know um, anything that I missed or, or something like that that you know about Doc Boggs. Please, please put it in the comments below. Um, I'll also, I will uh, see if I can, I'm going to link uh, some of the articles and um, also uh, some of the stories uh, I can, I'm going to put down in the description below so you can check those out. Anyway, uh, I will see you guys later, BC. Bye. When I left my father's house, I was well supplied and made a mistake and I did wrong and I'm dissatisfied. I believe I'll go back home. I believe I'll go back home. I believe I'll go back home and acknowledge I've done wrong. I go back to my father's house I'll fall down on my face Say that I'm unworthy I seek a servant place I believe I'll go back home I believe I'll go back home I believe I'll go back home I've done wrong. I go back to my father's house, the place I love so dear. There they have plenty to eat. I'm a starving here. I believe I'll go back home. I believe I'll go back. I believe I'll go back home and acknowledge I've done wrong. Father seen him coming. He 
met him with a smile Threw his arms around him Said, this is my wandering child Father said to his servant Go kill a fatty case Bribe old friends and relatives My son's come home at last I believe I'll go back home I believe I'll go back home Acknowledge I've done wrong Bank was in possession All sorrow and pain Father's heart was filled with joy His son come home at last The other son was I've done wrong Father said to his elder son You've been both good and kind Not a calf I've given thee But all I have is thine I believe I'll go back home I believe I'll go back I believe I'll go back home, acknowledge I've done wrong.